why is water here? Water is not Afrobeat. She didn't Fair. say that, which That's is Afrobeat. a thing that they do globally, yeah, yeah, where yeah. everybody coming out of Africa now is doing Afrobeat just because Afrobeat is the popular, it's the popular sound. one. When it comes to Ama Piano, <laughs> David Doe is one Nigerian artist that gets in the conversation of Ama Piano. Ama, yeah, yeah, Rightfully absolutely. Rightfully so, absolutely, because he yeah, has some yeah. of the biggest Ama, yeah, Ama Piano, Piano songs. songs. Everybody's making music now. And the fact that everybody's making music right now, there's going to be a lot of mediocre stuff out there. Adekunle Go. Yeah. It's a perfect example of an artist that, that is always reinventing himself. And we love it. Yes. But it, we can't deny that when he first transitioned from the Adekunle Go that we knew yeah, to, to AG Baby. the pop star, people were like, no, 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 no. Welcome to another edition of Zero Conditions Podcast. Melody's in the building. Tolani is absent. Ogalolutu, absent. I do not know what is going on with the man, but a stand-up guy is in the building. <laughs> yes, he showed up. The yes, other sir. men did not show up, uh, but Tolu Daniels is in the building. Ogalolu, yes, if you watch this, I don't know what you mean by you forgot to be Lulu to show up. Me. I don't like. I don't die. <laughs> but, <he forgot. laughs> but of course, the show must go on. I'm so excited to have this conversation with you, Tolu Daniels. This is the first time we're having a chat. Yeah, yeah, I feel yeah, like there's yeah. so much I'm going to ask you. I hope you don't get into trouble. Uh, but yes, <laughs> it's still zero conditions. Brought to you by Pop Central. We're live on TV and, of course, the Shiva's Regal. And, yes, you can catch us live on Pop Central Channel 189. And, of course, this episode drops on Monday across all your favorite streaming platforms. Let's get into all the conversation. Yes, sir. Tolu. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Afro hype. Uh. <laughs> Just in case you do not know, Tolu Daniels is, like, one of the biggest hype men, A&R, music execs in... Afrobeat. I try, I try. You do, you do used to do stuff. I try, I try. You, I try. Uh, you do used to do stuff. Like you do <laughs> used to stay away from trouble too. Yes, so like <laughs> very well. I stay away from trouble. Except very one well. once once when I see your tweet and I'm like, hmm. Yeah, sometimes tweet, I just like this tweet is coming from somewhere. Yes, now let's <laughs> sometimes I just be like, let's poke. Let's, let's poke, poke some people. Let's <laughs> poke. <laughs> then you do that too. But I like to stay, I like to stay away from drama, man. Like mm. I really I try. But sometimes you just have to like poke some people, let them know that it's happening. <laughs> I, I feel like the the older you get, the more less interested you oh, are in yes, a lot of yes, things. Oh yes, yes, yes. So I think recently I was, recently I was like going to like stuff, and then I saw like a couple of tweets from like when I was younger, mm-hmm. bro, bro. Sometimes I used to be like that. <laughs> I used to be like that. I, I used to talk a lot on Twitter, but I think I just when you grow up, you just you had your buju moments. I I I no no. <laughs> but yeah, man, the older you the older you get, you just realize that sometimes all you need is just to make money <laughs> and just leave every other thing be. And leave the shalaye. Exactly, man. I I also be. think that that um going back to maybe like your social media or seeing the old you. opinions yeah. that you used to have i i think that people should not hold it too much oh of course of course except the opinions are ex- like extreme maybe like you used to have like you used to, tr- used to threaten to kill people yeah, yeah, you used to have yeah, like rapist yeah, conversations yeah. Yes, all yes, those class, kind of things are heavy that uh, we can now be bothered yeah, are you okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, are you yes, all right should this person yes. be arrested but if it's like opinions mm-hmm. or being a maybe being a troll or having very bas bas conversation, people should understand, especially if you were younger at that time. At that time, yes. Not yes, like you're in your forces yes, and making yes. a full of yourself <laughs> on social media. I, I feel like people 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 go and then you learn yes. and unlearn stuff. You yes. decide that oh, this is what I used to back then, but I don't think I should do this at this age. Yes. You know, I understand. Yes. But I think people should just allow you know, people grow. When allow I see some people, grow. when I see some people like when I see some people tweet some things now, I'm like, well. I mean, this is this is your time to. It's your time, like yes. This, so yeah. it's fine. <laughs> I, I agree. It's like <laughs> yeah. these days, I'm just like, hmm, okay. We've all been there, or exactly. some people have been there, exactly. and it's just age playing out. Exactly. But I generally also think that in the music space, mm-hmm. a lot of times people expect you to be dramatic. Or I don't know. Hmm. I feel like sometimes people sometimes want to overcompensate because you people are i'm talking to you people i'm yeah. sorry yeah cool. <laughs> you people are so obsessed with like visibility hmm. like so hyper like people are obsessed with hyper visibility that people will do anything to stay in front of the yeah. conversation yeah and because they feel like if you're not in front of the conversation you're not visible maybe yeah. trending on insta blog <laughs> no. or something you won't get jobs so it's like 
people sometimes people like they might want to say like the most mundane things yeah yeah and they just want to be sensational about yes it. <laughs> and because the system rewards it sometimes exactly the system rewards all of that so people feel like if you're not if you're not throwing in something slightly controversial in there nobody's going to talk and so people tend to be like very very sensational when they say like a lot of things but i think like i said i mean it's it's, it's really down to like growing up growing up right I, I i'm for me shall i'm going to put everything down to like growing up because me two years back me three years back me four years back before i started working in music proper i just used to be like a music lover i was trying to be very very sensational because you know <laughs> i can't lie i was trying i was trying to be all Just of that to be but spotted. exactly but so that's a thing that it, do it is a thing it mm. is a thing uh people just want to you have to be seen people want to be seen but i think growing up i've just realized that i, I don't want to be that to be honest i just i just want to be on my own if i say something you don't agree with it you don't have to agree with it yes and most of them, i don't even want you to know what i'm saying to exactly <laughs> if you like this is your opinion great me i have my own i'd rather hold on to it you do you everybody will be and fine. also i'm not going to go back and forth with you exactly. on social media if i exactly. tweet something you don't like it that's your business oh that's the last thing I would if do. you respond all the best to that's you. the last thing like i, I really ap- i really appreciate and like some of people that go on social media and be educating people i will <laughs> never you, be devote my business that's to your you opinion do. that's how you feel oh, okay cool. oh all right fantastic i'm not great. i'm not going great. back and forth I, I i think i've made it like i've made it a conscious thing never yes. to reply trolls me too. But I don't even. I don't want to say you. Even in real life, I'm not going back and forth. Yes, human you understand. Doing that on social I mean, like, media. there's a ton of there's a ton of people that enjoy what you do. So yeah. why focus on that one person that does not enjoy it? But for so now on that conversation, mm. are you also of the school of thought that sometimes when celebrities, you know, sometimes celebrities get trolled, yeah, and they go and pick that one negative comment and respond and say, my goodness, and be emotional all about mm. that, about that tweet. Mm. And people be like, why do you have to do this? There's so many people supporting you. Why are you picking that one person? I mean, sometimes it's sometimes it's just I understand where people do it. Sometimes you just have to like let off on some people. You understand? You just have to go off like because okay, yeah, there's there's a, there's a number of people like supporting what you do, and yeah. you decide to go and pick out that one person. Mm-hmm. Maybe that one person that you decided to pick out. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's it's been like constant. Do, oh, dragging so you yeah, constantly. You understand? So you just one Looking day you just said that. Ah, wait, you exactly? What did I do to you? Like I really, you understand? But so I understand people that do that. Mm-hmm. But my advice is always like, bro, just let it go, man. Let's just go. I I would rather not respond to a troll. Yeah. I would rather not respond to a troll. There's like there's for you for one person that does not enjoy what you're doing. There's probably like two or three other people that enjoy what you're doing. So why not just talk to the people that enjoy it? Ask them why they enjoy it. Ask them what you can do better. Share you get so that way you are, you know people that genuinely fuck with it. And that's what, that's but me trolls. I I I've made it like a conscious thing never to like reply trolls. Reply trolls, on the conversation of. So for you now, you wear like different caps, hype man. You started as a music lover, went into hype. Yeah. Now you're doing A and R, music exec, you're doing this, you're doing that. What is the what's the relationship like with other hype men in Nigeria? Do people have a community? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I think okay, so cause I, I always say that in the food chain, in in the in the music industry food chain. I, I think hype men are like bottom of that food chain. Mm-hmm. That's fine. That's fine. I mean, that's mm-hmm. fine for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. Hype men are like the bottom of that food chain. But we, for Misha, the way it is, I just see it as everybody just doing what they enjoy. Like everybody doing what they love. I can do this thing. You also can do it. So that does not take away from the fact that I can do it. Because mm-hmm. you can do it as well. It does not take away from the fact that I can do it. You understand? But I think there's 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 a working relationship. I'm I'm very good friends with like a number of hype men, like everybody. I'm I'm very good friends with Livewire. I'm very good friends with um, Toby Shang, Big Bimi, uh, Tosa Mark, uh, Active Boy. A number of hype men, like Melody is my guy. You know Melody, now am I? Of course. Yeah, she understands. So like, I feel like we 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 hold this we hold this relationship where mm-hmm. everybody's just you know we're cool. Mm-hmm. We're not. They're not giving us what we what we deserve like in the industry. So why do we have to stick it to ourselves? Why mm-hmm. not just you know mm-hmm. stick together? So yeah, I think there's a, there's a very fine working relationship for me. Shao, the mm-hmm. way me I understand it and the way me I see the other people. <laughs> you know, like me, <laughs> me, exactly. Yeah, I'm okay. Me, I'm okay with everybody. I love everybody. I see. I feel like everybody's doing their thing, and mm-hmm. yeah, it's it's really it's. What's Afro hype? 
Ah, is okay. You guys created. Is it... So this is where we. This is <laughs> this is where we disagree. Okay. I don't know where that came from, and I don't know where it started from. Mm-hmm. Uh, Afro hype. I feel, I don't know, man. I'm going to say this. Like, I'm going to say this. I don't know about that movement, and I don't think I'm a part of that movement. Oh, okay. It's not a thing that you guys. I know Shaya is really talk about. Yeah, Afro-hype, yeah, Afro-hype, yeah, Afro-hype. yeah, yeah, so yeah. So don't you think that's so? So I think me. It's not just Afro hype. So I, I am so, I am so against this Afro anything. <laughs> anything like this you slap afro in front of it so i think me oh, i'm no, against that's that okay. yeah that's me so it's not like everything like of course like i've been can put out songs I, i've got I've, there's i've got this song um a rapper put me on the song you can put hype man on the song fat man scoop is one of his rest in peace with fat man scoop it's probably like the greatest hype man that i ever that I ever lived and it's got like a number of records out there mm-hmm. so like hype man can do songs hype man can be on songs but do we have to call it afro hype i don't know I, I'm just against slapping Afro in front of everything. Yeah. What is Afro hype? Is you basically just jumping on the song? It's, it's bounce. It's freestyle. So why does it have to be Afro something? Why does it have to be Afro hype? Is you just being? Um, what's this guy? This guy that did this song that uh, you want to bam bam. Yeah, uh, you want to you chill, want with, want the to chill with the big boys. Um, it's a hype man. Uh, that that is that is like literally an hype man just bouncing on beats. Mm-hmm. You understand me? So yeah, hype man can do like great things, but I don't know if we should slap the tag Afro hype on it. Goya Meno. Yes, Goya Meno. Yes, he put out a song, it went crazy. Tobisha put out a couple records last year, it went crazy. Uh, Shaye Banks also put out a couple records that were really good, I, and that is fantastic. Like hype man can put out songs. That's that's fine. I, I've got songs. I've got songs out as as a hype man, as an executive producer. Mm. You understand? But like, should we slap the tag Afro something to it? I don't know. That's the part that you don't agree with. Yes, I don't agree with yeah. it. So for as someone who is now like in the music space, right? Mm. How I'm sure you saw the entire conversation about Super Bowl. Yeah, Kendrick yeah, Lamar yeah, headlining. Yeah, yeah, Nicki Minaj going crazy. Crazy, crazy how I called that actually. I was I was speaking with Wano Wano Shikoya. Yeah. I think she tweeted. He said when the announcement was made, we were just before the announcement was made, we were yearning. I was like, I feel like Kendrick is going to play this year's. Super oh, you Bowl. said it before. Oh yeah, I called it. I, I, why? The, because of the drama with him and Drake, or why? No, no. Because okay, so if you look at it, because people are saying that because of that drama, yeah, his announcement came off of that, or that there's, drama there's that. inspired that. There's that. In the news yes, and there's that. that. But if you look at it, who's, who, who are the artists at this right now? Like, who yeah, are the artists in rappers the world. in the world right now? You before Drake. you before yeah, you say Drake, you say Kendrick, you say Taylor Swift. Uh, rapper, she's rapper now. Uh, no, no. Okay, I'm saying like artists. artists, artists okay, yeah, Taylor, you course. say Travis Scott. So I was like, who's going to perform this year? And Super Bowl is not really just about like who's hot and who's not. I was not. about to say that. It's not always about who's yes. hot and who's not. It's always about like who can deliver very, very good performances. Performance, yes. Like somebody that is very, very artistic. And then you yeah. look at the list that I just made. Who's the, who's the number you've one You've been in the industry like? for a while. You've paid your dues. Do you understand? Yeah. Those, that list. Kendrick, um, Drake, Trav, Taylor Swift. Um, I don't know who else did I say. But like if you look at those four people, who can deliver like serious performance? Like, okay, so you say rappers. Kendrick Lamar is probably like the, the the biggest performer like in rap right now. I'm a I'm a J Cole fan. J Cole is my ghost, but I know that before you before you pick J Cole, you are going to pick Kendrick Lamar this when year it comes to performance. Okay. When performance. it comes to performing, when it comes to being creative with your with your shit on stage, you know, creating like very very good performance sets. Mm-hmm. I'm going to pick Kendrick before before I pick Cole. Yes, I'm sorry. That's my ghost. When it comes I mean, to lyricism, God. oh yeah yeah no 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 Cole for sure Cole for sure. Cole for sure like i've <laughs> i've listened to Cole like since forever so like the super bowl thing yeah everybody you i don't know man super bowl has never been about what hometown you're from or this thing i think i saw somebody tweet something one time like that super bowl has been in new orleans for like at least 10 times and they did not they did not go and pick uh, new the, the the person that is from New Orleans. They did not go and say, okay, let's pick a native from New Orleans. It's never always about being, it's, ne- it's never always been about uh, who's from what. Mm-hmm. So the other the other Super Bowls in New Orleans, why didn't you, you and play it when he was the oldest artist in the world then? So, so, so you think that Kendrick deserves this? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Do you think that, um, so for people who say that he has not earned the right to headline Super Bowl mm. or some people who feel like he might not be able to kill it. You, you think that's, a, that's just people talking? Nah, that's just people talking. 
That's what people talk it about. Was, it, was, it was at the Super Bowl in 2022, right? Was it 22 or 20? The one with, uh, yeah, with Beyonce. The, no, the one Which with one? Dr. Dre. Okay, Dr. Dre. He, he was there and his set was like, his, his, I think it was Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, um, Mary J. Blige, and Kendrick. I think his performance with Beyonce was at, was at the Grammy. I, I can't yeah, remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that was, at that, yeah, 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 yeah. that was at that was at mm-hmm, Grammys. I mm-hmm. think so. But yes. Uh, so if you look at you look at that uh, 2022 Super Bowl, mm-hmm. you see Kendrick's performance, and you can tell that this man can clearly do, mm-hmm. can clearly headline like the mm-hmm. Super Bowl on his own. People saying he has not earned it. That's a lie, Shaq. Because I think Kendrick has at least three classic albums. Mm-hmm. It's got like at least three classic albums. Mm-hmm. Um, there's the one that there's, there's that one that has a uh, them and the mm-hmm. rest. Um, there's uh, to pimp a butterfly. Yeah. And then there's the last one. I okay. think the last one was a very 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 great album. It's yeah. one of my favorite albums like in the last ten years. Yeah. It's, it was very very good. So I, it's got like three classic albums. What do you mean it doesn't? He has not earned the right the to right perform, to perform at the Super Bowl. Bowl. That's that's cap. I can understand people that okay maybe before the beef there was like a little bit of uh, inactivity on the side. Yes. Yeah, I can understand that. But I mean, beef or no beef, it's been hot for like six months straight. Okay, okay, <laughs> I hear you. Yeah. So, so the, the 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 performance that Beyonce and Kendrick had was at the BET actually. Oh, it was BET. Okay, 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 okay. Just and that was fire actually. It was that was fire, very, very fire. mad very, performance. Very fire. So now that entire announcement now spiraling to Nicki Minaj calling out seemingly yeah, calling out Jay-Z yeah. <laughs> and all of that conversation she's funny <laughs> but wait <Go> is this <laughs> <laughs> she's funny but go on <laughs> now Jay-Z is someone that people will wear in yeah, the industry yeah, absolutely. like people like never really been in his business yeah, yeah. people are like ah Jay-Z 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 but for this to happen it just goes to show that she has had like her own person she has had her own issues with jay-z maybe mm. not personal mm. but she's had issues with jay-z yeah. for a while that she never talked about until this issue happened and i feel like she used this moment this one to, to, to speak now out say, yeah. i don't like you yeah i know that in the in the and people are not talking about how because she's a legend or mm-hmm. she's a she can call him out and you know Typically, a regular regular might not be able to do that because of cancellation. How anybody can call anybody out? If you're ready to, if you're ready to put your chest, call anybody out if you want. But I, I, is that in Nigeria, mm. right? I think that when it comes to like the music space, how do you guy, how do you handle such conversations when it comes to like? people that are revered or yeah, people that you yeah, respect. Yeah, and then you don't want to cross that You don't want to cross that. As someone yeah. like you, you know, like a yeah. hype man now, yeah. Yeah. I know that there are people that you probably don't oh, like, yeah, you yeah. don't badun them. Yeah, absolutely. It's and, a lot. you know, she's like, <laughs> it's, a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a long list. But, uh, <laughs> that's the part I don't understand. Okay. How do you guys navigate? Ah, bro. Yeah, so, so, one, <laughs> uh, it might sound weird because of, of the type of thing that I do that like, type mm-hmm. of job that i do but i don't like people and i don't like being outside i don't like being around same people. i can relate to both she understand so but for what i do as a hype man as an ear now i have to connect with people i have yeah. to relate with yeah. people she understand but still i i me, I, I maintain like i maintain my standards because yeah. I, I i keep saying it the minute i sell my soul for anything in this industry that's the minute i'm done hmm. what do you mean by sell your soul if if i have to do something that my my spirit would not sit with but i have to do it because so is the industry then i think that's the mean that i'm done what's that thing that you know like you you'd, you'd be asked to do and you feel like this is you selling out yourself hmm. so maybe you ask me to because say um how do i put it let's just paint a scenario yeah so i'm working with you yeah yeah so because i'm working with you and you've got beef with somebody else. Now that other person that you've got beef with is my own person. Yeah. So if you expect me to inherit your beef, and you really like pin it down, like my feel like I need you, I need you to inherit my beef with this person. And I can't do that. Someone you're cool. I can't do your that. Friend. I can't do that. Like I am not gonna. But do you that. have the conversation with your friend. And be like, yeah, yeah of, course, sure, of course, of course, because of you're course. Yes, with your friend. yes. But it's it's a number of things that people that yeah. they would ask share. But me, I, I know that the minute somebody asked me to do something that i'm not, not sitting in the, exactly and i don't want to do I, that's the minute i'm done with everything so like relating with people i don't relate to a lot of people to be honest mm-hmm. i don't relate with a lot of people because i mean it's like all those things now breeds contempt 
You understand? Yeah, and see finish. Exactly. So you understand? So like, I'd rather just stay in my own lane. I stay in lane. But there are people that you really do not want to cross their toes, yeah? yeah. You really don't want to cross their path. You just yeah. want to, you know, give them their respect and let them be. But you understand that this person, you, know, you might not necessarily agree with how they do things or you might not like them. But you know that, okay, this person, because Kaba plenty for this industry. Ooh. Oh, Ooh. seriously. Oh, see, I don't know if I should say this or not. I don't know if I should say this, but there was this one time I had to be with somebody and they were calling me off shows. <laughs> yeah, so, but it's always, it's always crazy like that. Cause so did Kaba's, you go and beg the person? Did I beg? Did you go and resolve? Uh, yeah, yeah, we, we, we said to it, but I don't know if I begged, but we said to but you it. Ha- so, <laughs> wait, how did you find out that this person was the reason you were getting cut off on show? Oh, it was. Were people telling you that, no, it I was know people book you, this person does Oh, it was obvious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was obvious. So, when you now went back to have that conversation with the person, did you say, oh, bros, as you mean it's a bros, bros, I hear saying that you did cut me off show, wait, yeah, was that uh, how you were about nah, it? Did, nah, you speak, nah. did you Did you come out straight to tell the person that, oh, guy, I know saying that you did cut me off show? Nah, not not like that actually. Not like that expressly. I think uh, it was just more of, oh okay, I admit my mistakes. You you had some you had some fault on your side, yeah. and things did not go as good as they should have gone. Let's just, Let's just move resolve. on. Exactly, that Ooh. was it. <laughs> so, I know that I see you hype a couple of shows. Hmm. I'm not gonna mention names. Do you get paid for all of them gigs that you do? Are they oh, no, no, uh, not all you shows. Do for the love of it. So when I started out, when I was going back to being younger and growing old, when I started out, you know, there were some shows that I would do. Ah, why not? For the love of the game. <laughs> for the love of the game. There's this tweet that there's this tweet on my Twitter where I said like, the only place where I find like genuine peace and love is when I'm on stage performing, and that's real. Like that's, that's only one time that I really feel like at peace, like with the world yeah. when I'm performing on stage. So, so back, back, back in the time, like I would go to some shows and just, you know, I just want to let loose today and just, you know, really rage. So I'll go to some shows and perform for free. But now I'm old. Like I'm oh. going older, man. She understand. I need to. Today. She understand. I've got, I've got family to feed. I've got mouths to feed. But there are some shows that. You know that when you play this show, you get you're, another. exactly, you're definitely putting yourself like out there to like people to you understand. I know, I know a number of shows that I played for free, and somebody in the crowd saw me play that show and decided to book me for another show that I got Ooh. paid for, like proper. She understand. So there are shows like that. You just have to like you know do balance the plus, and the plus and minus. Yeah, she sure understand. So there are shows like that. There are shows that even there are some shows they might not pay you like your exact booking fee. She just like, oh, you know what? Take this honorarium now. She may can't do this thing, but you know that okay, this show that you are playing, you know, yeah, 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 you are going to get something out of that show that might not be your booking fee. At that time, she understand. When people push this, cause I, when people push this notion that <laughs> this false notion mm. <laughs> that we are brothers and sisters. Yes, yeah, so we are not brothers. So don't mind them. <laughs> help me, help. Don't make it about money yeah do you understand yeah. like why can't you use your talents to help mm. for example now like you as an as a let me use you in the in the category of a hype man yeah they say oh why can't you as to daniels now be hyping for an artist for free at his shows oh yeah or there, why was can't time you? Was, <laughs> there was one time there was i, I tweeted something like that so i'm trying to use how does how does it make you feel when people have those kind of i'm like so it's like this you you want to use me that's that's one I I hate, I hate that word. Use. Use, yeah. But but it exists. Hmm. It exists. So you can't deny the fact that it exists. Sure, you understand? Like just like the algorithm when it comes to music, I hate all of that, but you can't deny the fact that it exists. Yeah. So you can't deny the fact that people trying to use you for their gain exist. So now you just have to dip it like this. Okay. Am I willing to allow this person to use me because I can also use this person back? Sure, you understand. It's, it's just it's, it's a game, man. If I'm if I'm willing to let this person use me, then I've I've already done the math in my head. Like, okay, you know what? Okay, if I give this person like a couple of shoes, I know I can be able to you know call a favor from this person as well. I can be able to get one or two things from this person out. So sometimes you might allow one or two people use mm-hmm. you. But the using self, you said you guys use your own head, join them. She so understand. understand. She un- exactly. Because if you keep letting them use you, then it just it becomes a situation of, oh, yes, you can always get that person. For free. And when the monitor comes, they might not even give you. Yes. 
they would not remember you trust me <laughs> they would not remember you know because oh this person has been doing this thing for free oh yes we're now making money off of it but like he he doesn't mind doing it for free so why pay him so it's not a situation where you have done something for free and then i'll be like ah, when money come out let's oh no no there's been that oh wait. there's been that oh that oh trust me as for 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 eh, for all the terrible people in the scene there's always really good people the people that just you know let's share money and just be fine let's she be understand happy. so like when you do some things and oh now he's making money uh, uh, of course there's been people that oh yeah now let's share money we've been doing this together like for time you understand so there's always that so you just have to like gauge it and know that okay you know what i'm willing to let this person use me because i know i'm going to get so so thing from this person me my 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 ideology is just that the minute it starts messing with my mental health the minute yeah. it starts messing with my conscience the minute yeah. it starts yeah then i'm done with it then yeah, that's me I that's agree. Me. When it begins to stress you out, that's yes, the exactly. Mm -hmm. Like I'm fine, no. Let's use me. But the minute it starts, it start getting to me. It starts fucking up my mental. Then I'm done with it. Me, mm -hmm. I, I don't mind. I don't mind walking out of any situation that is yep. going to mess up my head, no matter how much is on the line. I'm willing to walk away from any situation. Mm -hmm. Okay, I hear you on that. Now, let's talk about you as a music exec. Okay. I know. Well, one of the, the recent um, artists that you've worked with, like recent work that you've done, yeah. that has been very popularized, has been yeah. your work with Lona. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, let's talk about that. Okay. Prior to Lona, hmm. were you involved with other artists in this capacity? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who? Uh, Oladapo. Okay. There was, so there oh, was I think it was you that told me that message. That no, okay, you sent me. I know you sent me a couple of songs that you worked on. There was this project that yeah, you sent yeah, me. Yeah, okay. yeah, I yeah. Okay, yeah. So, was on it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I think um, before 2024, before working with Luna, it was I, I worked with all of that but briefly. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, cause me the way the, the way I work the way I work in music is I I need to I need to like connect with the artists and the music. To, to want to like put my name on it if mm -hmm. my name is on it then it means that i i, I actually exactly like yeah. i connected with it and I, i'm really into it mm -hmm. so before luna yeah i did um i did a project for a lot of boys um mm -hmm. his, his album from last year in case i never love again we love that body work. yes it's it's, it's it's probably one of my favorite works i love it it's probably one of one of the favorite things i've yeah. done yeah. so yeah i worked with a lot of boys there's a there's a rapper that i've been that i've been working with all my should i say all my life but like yeah all my music life to be honest because mm -hmm. we, we 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 grew up together we went to school together um his name is kejuni yeah yeah he's a rapper um we grew up together and i think that was like the very first person that i ever saw with enormous talent oh. so it was it was mind-blowing like mm -hmm. when we were that young and i could see this person Potential. like like bro this is mad though so like yeah, I've been working with uh, KJN for time. I worked with a lot of but then um, I worked with like sparsely, just brief, do yeah, one yeah. or two. Yeah, well, like the one that you've... yeah, 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 and yeah. Okay, so now, what does it take to? So you you did you work in different capacities? You in our yeah, um, I know you worked with his. Um, styling, I think. Uh, no, no, so creative visual, direction. Creative then di I, yeah. I, di I, di I directed like the videos, the videos as well with yes, yeah, yes, with Swaggy yes. Black Boy. How do you guys decide to work? Because I'm assuming you can correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. That of course Lona is not an established artist yet. Yeah. yeah. He's up and coming. He's yeah. emerging. He's yeah. popping. You know, people are getting. He's building his community slowly, right? Mm -hmm. How do you? Because in an in industry that is doggy dog. Yes. Yeah, so. How do you decide to start growing with an artist? knowing that these artists can get to a point and sit and chase you away <laughs> okay so i'm sorry you must have seen it happen oh absolutely I'm oh like, absolutely. i don't want you anymore. several times uh -huh. several times so i think with luna this is how we started i i'm currently i currently would um a role at kvlt as the now director okay and um luna is signed to kvlt okay but outside of kvlt we've always known luna and his manager okay she understand and I think, yeah, media, media always says it, that even like outside of KVLT, myself and Luna would definitely have worked like this closely, she yeah. understand. But you need to, one thing that you need to understand is anybody that's, that, that, that's trying to work in music can work with an artist, mm -hmm. is that the artist is the product. Hmm. The artist is the product because without the music, nobody else is eating. Yep. 
the producer is not gonna the producer the, pro, well, the producer can it because the producer will also make music from other people yeah. she understand it, it, not even with it might not even work with artists a producer can play a record on his own mm -hmm. that's fine but without the artist is the product um the photographer cannot do shit without the artist without the product without the music they are now cannot do shit without the music yeah. it's a number of us that cannot do shit without the music so the artist is the product that's one thing that's one thing that you need to understand and now for the artist it's not just looking at it from the artist's perspective for the artist no be product now life <laughs> for the artist no be product is 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 their life is yeah. is everything that they know she understand and in this instance you need to know that this artist they are putting their entire let me not say entire life but they are putting like all of their talent and trust in into your hands. your hands one day if you just wake up decide say you know what fuck it i don't like what's going on here i want to go happens all the time yep. and as as somebody that works in music as an exec you have to prepare your mind for that like you just have don't don't fight it don't fight it. you just have to prepare your mind for that the only thing that you can just you know just to, so you have yourself covered paper paperwork yeah you sign stuff so that okay when the artist decides that okay today i want to leave then you have backup so that, okay for all the years of work that i've done there's a paperwork that says I, I I'm entitled to so so thing and so so thing. Then then you know that okay all the years of work that you've put in with this person, you can get compensated for that in in some manner. But you need to understand it that it would always happen. Artists are very very volatile, and I've come to I've come to it's 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 horrible it's awful but I've come to accept it. I've come to accept it because some level of talent they always come with some level of delusion <laughs> yeah yeah some level of talent comes with some level of delusion and sometimes maybe now another person they see him as delusion but then they believe it's conviction they believe she that understand to like them. you just they look from outside yeah like, see what okay? are, exactly but, but this person believes it's, say it's like just they learn exactly. what exactly it's conviction and I respect it because if you you get some talent where you go get you go lose ah she they want me why you want to follow me talk like that you know why I be you know what if you do you understand it's to 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 another person is delusion to so to the artist like to the person with the talent it's conviction is you backing up your shit like this is I know I've got this she understand so you just have to understand it you just have to prepare your mind for it but always make sure that you look out for yourself that's what me always tell people look out for yourself make sure that you're covered it's not a brotherhood thing. It's business. It's business. The artist is the product. The music is the product. You are working with the product. You're selling the product. You're refining the product. Whatever it is that you're doing with the product. So you just know, guys know that. Now business. She understand that. How many companies don't come up for Nigeria this year? Yep. She understand. Like they yep. decided that okay, you know what, this business is not working for us again. It's time mm -hmm. to up and leave. Mm -hmm. Or oh, what do Nigerians do? We just go ah. But they got. Yep. She understand. Yep. So it's it's just like that, man. That's how I mean I say. Okay. So now, for. Luna's body of work is called Homeless. Homeless, yeah. yeah. Now, weeks ago, there was a conversation that Omale was having. You know, Omale is <laughs> an artist. Yeah. He's one of the, his fans coined a genre for him called Afro Depression. Which is lame that as fuck, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think is lame as fuck? What do you mean by Afro Depression? What does that mean? Like, what exactly does that mean, Afro Depression? I, I, I think that this is how I see it, yeah. right? I don't think it's a real genre. Yes. I, the way I see it, of course, it's not a real genre, of yeah, course. Yeah, I yeah. think it's just that Omale's music and Omale's brand had so much impact on people that people decided to just create that. And also, because you know, as Nigerians, mm. young people were going through a lot. A lot of people are just walking Fierce. around and going through things. And Fierce. it feels like Omale's music was has been able to convey that emotion yeah, for yeah, you and absolutely. also be like your companion absolutely. so a lot of people are depressed but not saying they are depressed but so you feel like that song or or my little that, existence kind of that movement caters for them yeah so but i hear you when it's, it's called Afro depression and i hear you on that so now he was talking about how um he had an interview yeah. where he was talking about how you know his fans used to call him that and he felt like at some point it's like i think he mentioned how i think he didn't like it yeah nobody's gonna like that did you it's see like, the yeah, it's like the things that I'm going to, you people are giving it an umbrella name. Mm -hmm. Some people think 
people might think it's just oh it's, mm -hmm. it's just music mm -hmm. it's just him uh, finding uh, a particular niche to mm -hmm. work with mm -hmm. nah it's not just music man mm -hmm. i feel like this is the way music is music is very very spiritual music mm -hmm. is you telling is is you telling your life story mm -hmm. Sure, you understand. Mm -hmm. Omali is not the only sad artist now. All these boys from all these all these boys doing trenches music in quotes. Mm -hmm. That's sad music now. Cause that's their reality. That's sad music. Mm -hmm. That's that's them being anybody can be sad on a record. Oz, um I don't know if I'm saying the name right. Ozia Ozia is sad. Like that's really sad music. Mm -hmm. Go tie with that song, somebody that I used to know, that's really sad music. Mm -hmm. Sure, you understand, but it's like it's just these people like telling like they are real life stories all of Luna's all of Luna's stories are real and it's not him trying to oh let's do afro depression it's just him telling it how it is so hearing people say that oh ah now afro depression sometimes it might it might it might rub off on it might rub on you like wrong wrong like in a, in a wrong mm -hmm. way like i understand if he doesn't like that like i would not like that if i was the artist that mm -hmm. was making mm -hmm. music like that and you just want to say oh yes this is afro depression now nah, i'm just really telling you my life story mm -hmm. just like the way um joe boy will tell you about him being in love with a girl mm -hmm. that is him that is his life is is a lover boy mm -hmm. sure you understand mm -hmm. it's him just making music mm -hmm. so the way joe boy will tell you about being in love with a babe the way rema will tell you about i'm making so much money right now that is his life yeah she understands so it's just people making music that is just them that's what may i say that so I'm, I'm even trying to like get because i know like in that interview in one of the interviews you talked about appreciating his fans yeah. for coining that genre but there's a particular part of the conversation that i'm trying to find where i know i i saw it on okay. my way here where you talked about not liking a part of the you know mental conversation or something i'm, I'm going to find that part out and i know that you know for luna that has been something that for luna now his music mm. he speaks about you know this level of sadness you know finding mental himself health struggles, mental health struggle yeah. and all of those things is that like you said that is his reality yeah i know that in this music space sometimes we create personalities for artists yeah yeah, yeah. we ask them to yeah, wear a certain yeah, character yeah, because yeah, we feel like sure. that will get them the fans mm -hmm. and they'll be like oh no you know play like you are feeling like this yeah. or act like you're yeah. feeling like this yeah is, is that the case for luna no absolutely not um if if you if you ever meet luna if you ever speak to him yeah i think the very first time that i spoke to him i i saw i saw it straight that this is not a person you create a personal for mm -hmm. this is this person has to at every time this person has to be who they are mm -hmm. and who they are is who he is sorry is like really is really prominent mm -hmm. is really you can just tell that this is who this person is. So is for Luna is not putting on personal. If you if you listen to him speak, if you if you if you if you if you if you talk to him, you can just genuinely tell that this person has as as has experienced like so much pain like yeah. for them to be able to make music like this. Mm -hmm. Every time Luna is every, every time me and Luna speak, every mm -hmm. story that he tells is always telling like a very gory, very gory, very, very sad story. So it's not a persona, it's something that he nah, that's he him, is man. experiencing. That's him. That's who he is. Yeah. That the, that that brother that brother has lived several lives. The last time I saw him, I think that was like two, three days ago, we were in the studio. I was working on a song for somebody, so he was just around. And he was just telling us like a couple of stories. He has stories to tell all the mm -hmm. time. <laughs> and he was telling us about how he was in a vehicle like with his friend. They were, you know, trying to public transport, trying to get to somewhere else. And the vehicle they were in eat a young boy and split his head open <laughs> like he has crazy stories like that so now the driver ran no i don't know is it was that he was in a car or they were just around the driver ran and they stood there and they 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 they, they were trying to just make sure that they find the driver so like stories like that i have never seen I've never, never seen, seen that, that before. Sure, you understand. Mm -hmm. So, like, how do uh, how do you expect me to tell somebody like that now that ah, we are put on that put on a persona for them? To, no, it is not inputting on a person. It is what he's saying. Sure, you understand. Like, I've never seen that before, and I'll never feel that emotion that he felt probably in that instant. So now, those emotions that he felt in that time, 
at the things that he, he makes music about. So it's not like you guys said, okay, you know what? Nah, what is selling? This is what we want nah, you to man. wear. This nah, is the category man. you're gonna be in. Nah, this man. That brother, that brother, that brother lived in, lived in a north like all his, all his life, a, a, a big part of his life because he's a nomad. And there's a line in one of his songs where he said, um, "And I know if he entered this road because of bandits." Yeah. And that's a real that's 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 real life story. Yeah. So when we went to when we were in Kano, because we went back to Kano, he grew up in Kano. Not maybe not but like Ka- a- yeah, Kano is a part of the story. Kano is like one that one place where he like truly ever felt like he was a part of something, he was a yeah. part of a community. Yeah. So Kano is a big part of the story. So we went back to went back to Kano to shoot like a couple of videos yeah. from his project. And we went back to the house that he used to live in Kano, that was where we shot the album cover. And while we were like, you know, trying to get everything ready, he was telling us a story about about his time in Kano and he was telling us so there was there was this walkway into the house. So yeah. he said what they would do back then was when there was like that Boko Haram period, what they what they would do was they would find a lot of bottles. They would break glass and just put it like by that walkway. Hmm. Plenty glass, just break glass by hmm. that walkway. So that if anybody is coming before they even get to the house itself, that one would not first stop them. And then they were not even sleeping. So mm. they were taking turns. That's watching. madness. Though. Brother, they were taking turns watching the house. So you understand? So they'll be safe. So that they will be safe. And then even after that walkway that they put glass on and everything, there's a back door, there's a back passage that they made sure that was always open. But as it was always open, there was they always somebody manning there as well. Yes. So like it's crazy, crazy story. And that time he wanted to leave Kano to go to Abuja, but he couldn't because it was not safe. It was not safe. So that was so I don't know if he entered this road because of ban. It was crazy. It's, so it's no be personal. It's, it's real not- life shit like yeah. real life shit my brother has seen a lot now for the conversation of afrobeats mm. i'm sure you saw the new, um, news about tyler winning best yeah category. Yeah. yeah i saw that video and you know she was in the she was nominated alongside like nigerian artists, yeah ira star chris brown was in category as well chris brown was in category <laughs> as well yeah how do you feel about the conversation people were having saying and of course her speech yeah which in my opinion i think her speech was very respectful I love before you have your opinion. Okay. Say, yeah, go go on. I go love on. her speech. I yeah. think that her speech was very profound. Yeah. First off, yeah, she appreciated receiving the award. Yes. Secondly, she represented where she's from. She South Africa, Africa. Yes. Yeah, and she the, and their South sound. Africa. She promoted their sound. Ama piano. Yeah. She promoted Ama piano. Promoted the, she also now went on to give credit to Afro Afro artists, artists. Yeah. And shout well. them out. Yeah. Name call them. Yeah. Can name call them and give them like their props. Mm. Nigerians had an issue with that. Nigerians said, oh, why? Why did they give... First and foremost, they had an issue with her speech. I don't mm. know why. Okay. Then they had an issue with the fact that she won that category or was even in the category. <laughs> okay. What is your own take on it? Um, so, we can't sit... Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be very, very honest. We can't sit here Thank and you. say... We can't sit here and keep saying Afrobeats to the world, yeah? And then when the world now comes to Afrobeat, we now we now tell them that. Tell me. Thank you, thank you. So when the world now comes to Afrobeat, we can we 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 can't now dictate how they collect it because we we wanted to give it to them. That was what we we said Afrobeat to the world. We wanted to share it with them. We wanted them to experience it. Mm-hmm. Now that they have experienced it, now that they have loved, it, we can't dictate how they are going to take it. You understand? Say, okay, you find a new hobby. Let's just take this for example. You find a new hobby. Maybe not even, you find something that interests you. You can, you you see somebody doing something and you, wow, this is so interesting. So you watch that person do that thing so much that you feel like, you know what? Let me try. Because I really love this thing. And, you know, they are willing, you know, it's Afrobeats to the world. They put out music every time. We're promoting in, uh, in the UK, in the US, in Canada, everywhere. So you're like, you know what? Let me try. I'm loving this. Now you can't dictate, you can't, I can't tell you not to try it. You understand? I can't tell you not to try it. I I brought it to you. You would not want to try it in the first place if you did not see it. Mm-hmm. If you did not fall in love with it. Mm-hmm. She understand. So now, Afrobeast to the world, we can't get keep. I'm sorry. But aside from gatekeeping, I have a problem. Yes. I have a that's from gatekeeping. I yeah. have a problem with Nigerians having a problem that non-Nigerians are nominated in Afrobeat category. category. Because when 
Bronner mm -hmm. was nominated in a hip hop category. We nobody, celebrated exactly. it. Nobody said anything. We were happy. <laughs> yes, now Nigerian artists and Nigerians spent ample time berating Grammy <laughs> for only nominating us in in African music categories, saying then, that Whiskey's essence deserves deserve to be, be in, a in a R and B. Yeah. Yeah. Rightfully so. Fair. I think it actually did. Fair. Yeah. Like the fair. Song of the year and all, all of that because essence. Had yeah, it was a, it was a really big song in in, in So in the States, if yeah. we did have that yeah. moment, why are we mad that other people are getting nominated in the Afrobeat category? It's so think, wild. Think with, to me. think with Nigerians is main character syndrome. I think I agree with you. On that. <laughs> We're going, Go, going to okay. Do that. Yeah. Yes. yeah. We're going on a quick break. Do not forget that everything that you missed um, live on TV, you can catch it the full episode. On the full episode when it drops on monday we're just going off for a minute on tv but we're still streaming we're still um you know going on live on the audio so when we drop it on monday you can catch the full conversation don't forget that this is still zero conditions brought to you by pop central and shiva's regal we're talking about nigerians main character syndrome. yes um so i feel like nigerians we have main characters you know and i mean i understand is it, it is is it main character or just delusion like i said before other people think it's delusion the person doing it to think is conviction so that's like we're writing episodes on gatekeeping what does that yes, mean yes i mean there's there's 200 million of us they say there's 200 million of us so it's we feel like we feel like we are world powers we're like we are a struggling nation i can understand it nigeria's greatest resource is is people mm -hmm. we we are a great nation with great people and like I said earlier, somebody with great talent would have delusion that people think is delusion, but you think is conviction. So we believe, most times we always believe that it, it should be about us, which is awful, really, really awful. I mean, there's so much that we do not know as a people. There's so much we do not we know. Even borrow from Exa that What's Afrobeat? <laughs> Let's do that. Actually, what is Afrobeat? It's it's a fusion. It's a fusion of different sounds that we did not create. It's it's a f <laughs> so I understand it. Going speaking about uh, let me so I, I think I digress. Yeah. Tyler's speech. My one problem with that speech, it was beautiful, but my one problem with it was the fact that well, she categorically did not deny the category, but she 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 just that song is is is, is Afrobeat. In all of it, in all of it's not she, a piano song. Yes, but then she she was right by saying all the music coming out from Africa should not be put under the umbrella yep. of Afrobeat. She yep. was right with that. But yep. that one record, that water song, that one record that did she win that for water? Yes, for water. See that one, that record is Afrobeat. So yes, I hear that part of the conversation, right? I don't think that she was necessarily saying the song is not Afrobeat. Yeah, I don't think she was speaking because Fairs. she didn't say why is water here? Water is not Afrobeat. She didn't Fairs. say that. What she literally she was, she said was right. is that she, don't put all the music from Africa, which as is Afrobeat. a thing that they do globally, yeah, yeah, where yeah. everybody coming out of Africa now is doing Afrobeat just because Afrobeat is the popular, it's the popular sound. one. Yeah. I really appreciate and respect the fact that in that moment she took the she, time to she educate took the them. time to educate people. Yeah, yeah. Shout out Ama piano artists and then still the shout genre, out Afrobeat artists. Afrobeat artists and also like tell talk about you know the music space. She yeah. didn't even have to share that share that moment with yeah she absolutely didn't have to absolutely do that. Um, she had to she had to share that moment too because <laughs> an afrobeat too this song afrobeat <laughs> she got she um, did an afrobeat song yes she now did have, yes now because yes, even now. nigerian artists like when it comes to ama piano mm -hmm. davido is one nigerian artist that gets in the conversation of ama, piano. ama yeah yeah right absolutely, fully absolutely. So because yeah, he has some yeah. of the biggest ama yeah, piano, ama piano songs. songs yeah 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 first 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 i mean th that speech was speech was good exactly. speech was great she she was i think She's she's a very she's a she's a well-rounded artist. Mm -hmm. I think she must have done like a lot of media training. Well, yeah. If are you have you made them? Yes, I made I, I made that available because yeah, can I get that? Cool. Uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, speech was brilliant. She you can you can tell that she's an artist that was probably like media trained. I don't agree with that media training, but I feel like that speech was brilliant. Mm. I feel like the last one where they asked her about her race and her color. Oh know, yeah, but, club, well, I do. I don't watch a lot of. Uh, yeah, but that one was a very good. Uh, one. Yeah. Okay. But so I, I feel like Nigerians. I don't like how we do those. Yeah, things. Yeah, we. I mean, 
like I said, main character syndrome. And there's a lot of us. So if if we are making noise about something, it gets it gets heard. There's a lot of us. There's 200 million of us. If we make noise about one thing, definitely people would hear it. So we always do that all the time. We always do that all the time. What is exciting you right now about Afrobeat and Nigerian music? Uh, the potential. Yes. I keep saying it. Afro, Afrobeat is not dying anytime soon. It's when not going to die. That, when people say that, we need can to be very... Yeah, sure. Okay. Thank you. No, I can hear you. When people talk about how... Nigerians should not get too carried away. Afrobeats can die off anytime soon. Die. I I I I I, I am. With other genres, the world moved on. Da, 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 da. Do you think that? So you, you think Afrobeats will be here forever? Right? Yes. So before be, before 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 this um before this generations boom yeah before this generations Afrobeats boom. Mm-hmm. We've had Afrobeats always go global. Them Sonia, they used to play shows in Tokyo. They were playing shows like all around the world. Fela was playing shows all around the world. Be- when Fela was playing those shows, they never born Luna. Mm-hmm. When Fela was playing those shows, all these like Ruga, like King Mandy, they were not even born. But Fela was with Afro, not Afro beats. Well, know? like we said, like we, like we said, all of the music coming out of Africa has been put in the Afrobeat. This mm-hmm. thing, she you understand? Mm-hmm. Fela was doing Afrobeats, fine. Mm-hmm. Do you think that what we have, the yeah. sound that we have, is we're back? Okay, and we are back live on Pop Central Channel One Eight Nine. It is still Zero Conditions podcast with Melody. So the Daniels is here. We're having a conversation about yes, different sir. things happening in this space. Don't forget that this is still brought to you by Shane and And you know. Has been helping himself all night. <laughs> yes, you are. I'll sip some. Time. I'll sip some. Yeah, please do. Enjoy yourself. Yeah. Do you think that the sound that we have now, mm. the Afro beats that we know, mm. is strong enough to last for a lifetime? So that's the thing. I think it, it goes back to asking the question now what is Afro beats? If you ask me, Afro beats is not a genre, it's not a sound, it's an umbrella name. That's what I think. Afrobeat, what do we actually do here? It's Afropop. It's pop music. Half of, sure. exa- half of everything that we do here is pop music. Sure you understand? But because here from Africa, you look at Afropop. Afrobeat is an umbrella name, if you ask me. It is not a sound. What's the, what's the, what's the signature Afrobeat sound? If you, can, if, you, if you think you can answer that. Well, I don't think it's one thing. I feel like it's in the beat, it's in the log drums. <laughs> It's in the beat, it's in the drums, it's in the percussion, all those things. I don't think that is one particular sound. People okay. can do it in a different Great. way. They can fuse it with different things. Great. I think it's more of even the sound. So now all those elements it's still, all, those, all those elements, you can still take those same elements and make another genre from those elements. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So I feel like African music is going to be here for a long time. If today we decide to call it Afrobeat, great. If tomorrow we decide to say it's Afropop, great. If tomorrow we say it's Afrofusion, great. When them fella were doing it, they called it Afrobeat. But it it did it, it, it was winning then. It did what it did what it was gonna do. It fed it fed that generation. So I feel like African music is always going to be hot like crazy. So whatever it is that we decide to call it to, shout out to everybody involved. But Afro, Af- African music is always going to be here, like always, and the potential is crazy. Cause right now, right now, everything that the 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 um, the, the genre lagged in in quotes, everything that the genre lagged, we're, we're, we're gradually putting them in place. Like what? Back then, how many hours did you know? Well, Back sure then, there. but like. Yeah, sure. Because she was in the building, they want to give us cocktail. Ah, she was. As usual. Please come inside now. Come to the frame now. Every time he he's comes, shy, he's shy, he's shy. He's shy. He's shy. He's always so shy. You can't, can't tell. He's always shy. I, I, I was in the frame the last time I was here. Yeah, what? I was in the last time I was yeah, here. You can tell that he's shy. Not for you. <laughs> Thank you so no, much. So, so, Thank you so much. Okay. 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 Let me try that then. Ginger. What's mm. what? Shiva's ginger highball. Shiva's ginger highball. This is, wow. this is, this is bad. No, he does, he makes mad as cocktails. Bro, shout out to you, man. This is fire. Thank you. I got one more round of this for you. 
no what shaking. down? What down? No shaking. So yeah. Oh, was I saying Jesus? I don't lose my train of thought. Yeah, we're talking about um Bella doing it. Yes, yes. Then those people did it. They, and here now. So how many here now? Yeah. Hey. So like right now, I, th- I feel like we have all of those things in place now that we did not have in place then. How many labels were? How many labels were really strong back in the day? How many how many creative agencies did we have back in the day? How many management companies did we have back in the day? We've got all of that now. So like there's the problem the problem with African music back then was structure. We are gradually putting all of that in place now because of the boom that is here. We are putting all of that in place. Turntable, for example, we did not used to have like a certification organization like that, but now we've got one. She understand. So like I feel like there's a lot of things coming coming together to make sure that the industry stays winning so, so there's potential a and r yeah is like is a word that in this space Very i think that a and r is one of the most disrespectful yes so yes so right yes people sir. come on social media every time and they assume that there is nothing spectacular about being an a and r yeah people also are of the opinion that a and r are not essentially needed hmm. in the way that they think that they are. They are. And hmm. they also assume that every or anybody can, can be an ANR. As someone who is an ANR and hmm. who is very particular about what he does, how do you feel about that conversation? Because I know that it trends from time to time where people say that all they do is put ANR in their bio. All they do is they, 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 they. Okay. Now we, we get ANR, how many songs don't be hit for Nigeria this hmm. year? Waiting that they do. Hmm. How does it make you feel? So I think all of that stems from ignorance. Yeah, I think it stems from ignorance. Ignorance on the part of everybody, actually. The artists, the listeners, and the a and themselves stems from a lot of ignorance. So now, you'd, you'd see people questioning, waiting the a and if they do, just because they do not know what a, an a and should do. So they're like, eh, anybody can do the role. They just put it in their bio. And that's because they actually do not know what an a and should do. And sometimes, it's not even sometimes, a lot of even a and do not know what we do. Sure you understand. So it stems like, it stems from a place of ignorance, to be honest. It comes from a place of ignorance. Saying that um, we do not need a and Music and industry is, is as old as time itself. Mm-hmm. And trust me, in all of those times, there's always been one person maybe back maybe when he first started maybe that person did not know that he was even doing an year and hours work yep. she understand but that person has always been there yeah that role has always been there always been there people say all of that just because they do not know that's what i think as an ENR, what yeah. do you think is the reason why we've not had like a mega super hit this year in september okay so i think right now i think the problem now is the industry has, the industry is very very open right now it's so saturated and you can you can understand that with any industry that experiences a boom like this a lot of people a lot of players will come into the game yep. when any industry that experiences serious boom like this there's going to be like a lot of new players that will come into the game so now i feel like right now the industry is so saturated that we have everybody's just making music now everybody's making music now everybody and the fact that everybody's making music right now there's going to be a lot of mediocre stuff out there like a lot of trust me now you so can't you that the music that we have now is mediocre? not all of the music has been mediocre but the fact that the industry is so saturated right now is that you can be doing mediocre stuff but if you have money and pull she understand then you can push your mediocre stuff so right now the fact is there's a lot of stuff for us to listen to and half of it is not great and half of the ones that are in our faces are not great hmm so you think that the reason we've not had a hit song yeah. this year is because the songs that should and not, I not, I not there. I not, yes, exactly. They are not the out there. They are not. When Joe Boy had his first hit song, Baby, he was not even known. Yep. But he was a smash hit, like a, smash. a nationwide smash yep. hit. You understand what I'm saying? Follow-up. You understand what I'm saying? So, like, right now is my my new music Friday playlist every Friday, brother. 
it's at least at, and i'm not even i'm not even playlisting half of all of the songs in the country yeah. that comes out every friday I've, i cannot play all of the can. songs mm-hmm. that at least every friday there's about 25 30 songs on my playlist just african music alone there's at least 30 35 songs on my playlist every friday that's a lot of music out there like that is a lot so before you for the listeners it's too much before you come to 35 to find the one that you think is going to be the hit you might not even listen to all 35. yeah because attention span before they get to the middle of it it's like abeg, abeg. you might not even listen to all 35 and inside that 35 now say 10 of those 35 now are from like no 10 is small say like 20 are from like established artists of course that is who you are going to go and look out for when they drop music first things first and they might not necessarily give you like the best product mm. You understand? So like coming to coming to like all of the music that we have right now to get to the actual ones. In in a in a in a in a non-saturated industry, a song like For Last Alone would have become a smash hit single. I heard you coming to that song this evening. A song like that, in a in a, in a, in a, in a very in a very open space where it's not saturated like this. Yeah. A song like For Last Alone would have become a smash hit. Moise dropped Instagram this year yeah. and I feel like that song had so much potential to become a smash hit single but you know what fucked that up because Dapa decided to drop another song the next week for the artist so they did not push that song enough so that's like volume that's what so that Moise dropped another song after that song yeah I think he dropped another project safe he dropped like five projects in the space of I don't know if I'm saying it right but I think he dropped a lot of projects in the space of okay, short so time so he didn't promote that Instagram for a while that Instagram should have in a very in a very in a very sane industry that has not become what it is today they would have pushed that Instagram song for at least six seven months before moving that's on that's a hit song exactly they would have pushed that song yeah. for at least a year safe before moving on because that is a very good song but they did not push that song the way they should have pushed it because by the next month they were already on to the next project so now is that a well yeah the music is there that's that's a near and problem i was about to ask that's that. a near and is problem is that also a problem of from the fans Just hear me nah. hear me now okay hear go on go on now. go on i think that do you feel like sometimes artists feel like she even now? Mm. How many albums does it take? Oh. <laughs> Do you feel like the artists sometimes feel the need to drop these albums frequently because they're also trying to cater to fans that move on quickly? Hmm. And a music space that expects because now in the music space that people people get tired quickly. Do okay. you think that they are also trying to service fans and yeah. a crowd that is moving on quickly and also trying to stay in the game and be, stay at the forefront by constantly dropping this thing. Okay, so deep this. I feel like we exaggerate that thing so much. Which one now? That you just said that uh, fans, they would want to move on to it. I think we exaggerate it. Hmm. So now deep this. Pick five random music fans and ask them. They would definitely have at least three favorite artists that they are dedicated to. Yep. Like they are so that they are religious. Yep. They Religi- de- yes. you understand? Ask pick five fans. Mm-hmm. They would have at least three. So now those people now that are religiously following one artist, and trust me, because I'm saying they are religiously following at least three artists does not mean it is always the big three. Nope. Sure, you understand? They are like I'm a I'm a religious LoJ follower. Hmm. Like I love LoJ so God, much. Sure, you understand? Too. And I know there's a lot of people like I'm that. A religious that, Joe Boy follower you understand like that so now we always exaggerate the fact that artists want to move on to the next thing hmm. one thing that one thing that i have asked that i don't know if i have acted child, but one thing that i have dipped and i'm working towards like making working in the industry is first things first forget the amount of music you are dropping forget what the music itself is you need a community yep First things first. Most important part first things first. First first. So if you like, don't drop in two years. If your community loves you. If your community loves you and they love the product that you served them two years ago, they will keep listening to that product until you come back. I agree. And servicing a community is not just dropping music. You can always service a community without dropping music. Hmm. You can always service your community without music. Music is not the only thing. They love you. People okay. People that love whiskey, they don't love 
risk it only because he yeah. can sing because they love his, his person you understand they me him, yes. they love him me i love loje not because he can sing he's a very great artist but i love him i love the fact that he, he reinvented himself i think he's a really he's a really beautiful artist exactly so but loje loje now and loje five years back were different yes he reinvented himself yes. and that is what i fell in love with she understand so you can always service a community you can always service a fan base without music all the time so i think we exaggerate the fact that oh yeah the audience is about to move give on to the music, next person give so give them music give them music. don't choke me you understand like me as a listener don't choke me allow me allow me enjoy it bro i'm still listening to rema's rave and roses still today I'm still listening to somewhere between beauty You understand? And sure you understand. Like, you would always... Bro, a lot of people say, like, a lot of OG music heads, like, that love music. It's too much going on right now for them to contend with, that they still go back to listen to the old stuff that they fell in love with in the first place. Sure you understand? So, Mio, I think we exaggerate that... Uh, we need to keep servicing the audience. We need to give, give keeping them music because they will go back to the next artist, the next minute. Man, no. You don't agree. I don't mm-hmm. agree. I'm a Wiz Akin fan until today. Wiz Akin has not dropped uh, in a long time, and I still go back to listen to that project from 2020. Because what he dropped before caught your attention. I think it was you understand, solid. and I am still in love with that. So I always, I would always go back to that. So, the re- just to answer the question, the reason why I've not had its record this year it's not because we know good music it's just because it's oversaturation there's too much out there for people to go to hmm. it's too much out there like too much and all these annoying open matters they keep dropping like every time all the time all the time all the time all the time hmm. so for hmm huh kendrick's before this project before the beef let me just Kendrick before the beef. Kendrick was like I said earlier, there was inactivity. Yes. But did his monthly listeners drop? Hmm. Did it? It did not now. <laughs> if he did not okay for like a year, he did not give us anything. We were still listening to the old stuff. So after that are fi- fighting to stay relevant and stay in the conversation and stay at the forefront. Yeah. That are now dropping music just to service that you think they shouldn't? Mm-mm. First things first. Build your community build your community i always tell people how you you as the artist how much promotion can you do for your shit how many tweets you want to tweet how many video you want to do i mean okay how many things you want to do the people that promote your stuff is the people that love it it's them talking about it that is going to make somebody else say ah you they always talk about this guy oh, yeah make i go here okay, yeah like the same way i fell in love with all that for sure you understand it is not you as the artist that will promote your shit. It is the but people that love your shit. But I think artists should promote shit. them to their shit ridiculously yes, and religiously. Yes, I understand. You I understand. Mysterious. Mm-mm. But it is not by it is not by what you do. I disagree. See, see, yeah. If you people are doing this same way, people are saying that it's okay for artists not to promote their no, shit. No, 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 no. I'm not. I'm not saying it's not okay for you. It's not. It's okay for you not to promote your shit. Okay. No, 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 no. Why you? Know, why you go drop music and you don't go promote your shit? But I'm saying that. People finding your stuff after time is not because of what you post. It's not because of what you are doing. It's because of what another person has told them. Brother, every day, I always, I'll, I'll, I'll pick my phone and I'll search Luna. I mean, that's... Mm-hmm. And I'll search Luna and I'll keep... I, every day, I'll see somebody tag their friend. I say, ah, guy, this artist where they always play. I don't finally go here. I'm way bad, I don't join Luna. I say that a lot. Sure, you understand. So when it comes to Luna, promote your stuff, oh. Like, why would you promote? Like, sure, you demand me. Now, product you they sell now. If you're not going to promote it, why are you making mm-hmm. it in the first place? But it is not always about what you do. To be honest, it is about the people that connect with it. It is how they are going to sell it for you. So first things first. The first set of people that you need to think about are the people in your community that love your shit. They are the very first set of people that you need to service. They are the ones now that will now go and spread the gospel and look for more people for that community. So long as what you're doing is good. Exactly. Don't lose your community because some people say they, 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 they build a community and then they change their... They direction change, of their music. Exactly. Direction of their music, the direction of their brand, the direction of their imaging. And then the people that fell in love with them as this person, they just start disconnecting us. Ah, 
I did not know you as this person. Now, so what's going you? on? So, how do you reconcile that with artists wanting to reinvent themselves? Gross, good. Because now, Adekunle Go yeah. is a perfect example of an artist that, that is always reinventing himself. And, I, and we love it. Yes. But it, we can't deny that when he, first of all, at the, at the, the first time he transitioned from the Adekunle Go that we knew yeah, to, to AG Baby. the pop star, people were like, no, 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 no. Change no. changes alien to people. And people were like, change his sound. People were like, no. Mm-hmm. Change his like fashion. People mm. were like, no. Mm. Give us the old Adekunle Gold. But he stuck with it. And now we're eating it. Do you know, do you know what he did? Left, right, center. Adekunle Gold is a mastermind. Shout out yes. to him and his team. Yes. So, for uh, what they El- did. Uh, Liz. Liz Elizabeth. and everybody oh, that worked on that. Oh, no, the Adekunle Gold brand. I love it so much. Do you, right? know, do you know what they did? Okay. Sorry. My, my question is that. So yeah. how do you reconcile wanting to service your community that knows you for something, for something. and also wanting to reinvent yourself and, be, and, right, and do something great. new. Great. So this is, I think Legood is a very, very good case study. Mm-hmm. So this is, this is how you do it. You have a, co- so you've, congratulations to you, you successfully built a community and they love you and they love what you're doing and they are so, so taken by you. And now you as a person, you, you have gotten to the point now that you have to grow. Or you want to grow so what do you do F- first things first no there's no growth that you are doing if you are not holding the hands of your community along with you on that growth journey on that journey if you're not holding their hands and saying okay you know what this is how i am feeling right now you fell in love with me when i was like this but let me show you why and how i have become this new person and why you should still love me because I've become this person. She understands. So, like, first things first, your community, make sure you go with them. Introduce them to the new face gradually. Let them see it. It is them that are not going to tell the people outside that are confused about the transition. And they'll be like, oh, we saw this growth right before our eyes. And we love it. And we love it. We saw how and why he has transitioned from this to that. So I need we need you people also to take your time and just pay attention to this. They are the ones that will go and interpret whatever it is that you have shown yep. them to other people. You understand? So like if you are growing, that's what Duke Lego did. So okay, on that's on one hand now. Yeah. So how do you how do we reconcile that with Fireboy? What do you think about Fireboy's album? Hey, no, don't put me first. <laughs> Okay, so this is the 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 the. the Do you like the album? I have not listened till now. So I listened once. I listened once. It and was it was good music, yeah. It was it was good music. But the way I listen to projects, the way I listen because I me I I'm, I'm always I'm from this school of thought. If you are putting a number of songs together in a compilation mm-hmm. and you're calling it a project, then you you have something to tell me. Mm-hmm. She understand. You are putting it together to tell a story. Mm-hmm. Maybe not necessarily a story, but you are putting it together to tell me something. Mm-hmm. That okay, this is you know what? I feel like projects. Because I love making I love making projects. I love making compilations. I started out as a music as a music lover making playlists. So like I always like to you know put a lot so of you things understand in. She how understand. We so I think you understand. So like I love projects. And I feel like every project should be you telling people something you I just agree. don't want to you just don't want to do mumbo jumbo and just pack you know she understand agree. so now when i listen to projects i i want to listen so i can get exactly what you're telling me yes i agree Shane, if i listen 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 over time and i can't pick out one thing I'll that you're to. saying then i'm like okay good shit though there's about oh four good songs on this i'll but just pick those four songs yes, I'll and I'll be, album, you understand I so i've the the fiber project i listened once and I've not gone back because I'm trying to take my time. Because right now, I'm still, right now, like I said, I'm still listening to Rave and Roses. Okay. When Rave and Roses drop, I did not like that. I said I was going to tweet this before. That I have a confession it. that I love it now. You know, but I think there was one problem with that project. It was the sequencing. Hmm. So that, I think that was what the problem was for me in the first place. I, I have a different experience with this Firebird album. Yeah. I was, I am, I say was, am, a passive Fireboy listener. Okay. This is the album that made me become a... Like, oh, wow. Yeah. Because the album jumped right at me. 
Ah, and yeah, he has yeah. received he has released a couple of body of, ah, yeah, of music ah, but yeah, this yeah. is the one i'm like this is really good shit. did you you loved ltg not as much not as, as much okay cool cool in my opinion this is fireboy's best body of work mm. i'm sure ltg fans like you do you like ltg oh yeah yeah, yeah. i'm sure you guys disagree obviously oh no no i i've like i said i've not listened to this as much new project to, to okay. form an opinion you understand yeah. me but I, I think that so the reason I made reference to this body of work is mm. that prior to him dropping this body of work, f- you know, Fireboy had a moment where fans were saying that they wanted him to go back. Yeah. To give, there was a disconnect. Them, there was a disconnect yeah. to go back for giving them the love song they knew him for on LTG, mm. and this entire Playboy bad boy was not yeah. working for them. Yeah. And and he you know was trying to explain that oh I'm not in that headspace anymore. I feel like on this body of work he went back to that. Okay. He gave went back to give that love song the way that the fans knew him. So, so it's like so I feel like that reinventing might not be for everybody. Okay. Might be for some people. And I feel like sometimes as people we be asking these artists for too many things. Like, yeah. They, yeah. It's confusing. <laughs> yeah. So me, this is this is where I stand. So maybe the reason. Okay. All right. Let me be honest with myself. Mm-hmm. Maybe the reason why I've not gone back because to Fireboy's project is the fact that I think he folded. <laughs> Did you ever get it? <laughs> you have been honest now. <laughs> I think he folded. He, he cut out. Yes. <laughs> yes. He bowed to the pressure. He bowed to the pressure. <laughs> I think that's what that. It, I mean, it's beautiful seeing that. Okay, yes, the pressure, the pressure that he bowed to is now. Playboy, you want to know that's the thing. Playboy. Chuna, that's the thing. The Playboy, the Playboy, the Playboy invention. It could have been genius if they did it well. But he came out of nowhere and just dumped that personnel on his people. You understand? Mm-hmm. That playboy, bro, what is the perfect act? It's the perfect act. You went from a lover boy to a playboy. It's the perfect act. But they missed a turn in that act. Lover boy to playboy. How did you go from that to that without even experiencing heartbreak in the middle? Imagine he gave us an heartbreak episode first. Before he showed us that, okay, I've become a playboy. We would have understood it now. So you think the fans were confused? I was confused. <laughs> I was confused. How did you go from a, pl- a lover boy, like a serial lover boy, to a playboy? Ah. It's, a, it's a very common story oh, from a lover boy to a playboy. Uh-huh. Very, very common story. But mm-hmm. there's a journey. And they did not just play out the journey to us. Maybe it happened to him or maybe they broke his heart. But he did not play that out to us. To the fans. I did not see. I did not see where they broke his out for him to become a playboy. What do you mean you become a playboy out of nowhere? So that gap, that that particular storyline. That was where he missed it for me. For you as a fan. For me, playboy as a persona, <laughs> fantastic. Eh. Yeah. Fa- bro, is the all I'm, um all that was last project it was called in case I never love again. You that's understand? a that's a that's a beautiful title. She, so now. That is him experiencing serious heartbreak on the project before In Case I Never Love Again. Wait, we had a loan. He was a serious lover boy there. He was a serious lover boy there. But on In Case I Never Love Again, he, he, he showed you the growth, the, the movement from being a lover boy to whatever it is going to become next. Because why? Somebody broke his heart there. He showed us that heartbreak. So if he comes back tomorrow and say, I would never love again, I would understand him because he had already explained to me how somebody broke his heart here. And I saw that like vividly in that project. <sighs> so, you don't, so you think <laughs> that it was the execution of the play, but oh, yeah. not necessarily becoming yeah, a not playboy? The per- yeah, not the person, it was the execution. And it was the, it was the selling it to the audience. And people not buying it. Even if, like, you know, the, the first sign of failure in that transition was the fact that the the members of his community did not even get it. Of course, people were confused now. Exactly. So, were, that, so that was the very first time like, of wait, failure. What? I don't... I think... Hmm, hmm. <laughs> I think that... Me, yo. Yeah. Me, I don't want to play boy, you. People that want to play boy. Me, I don't want to play boy. <laughs> I'm not with you people on that. You see, okay, this love, is lover boy. Lover boy that you This one, me, I want. Mm. And that's fine. And, and I also feel like it's not always about the fans. It's also about the artist uh, yes, and the story course. you want to tell. Want so to I tell understand you as a music exec yeah. and also as an A&R saying, feeling a type of way about an artist 
bowing or like listening to the fans yeah, so you, and you now changing yeah, so. the direction that or, or giving them the direction that they ask for me i understand your own graphs as like you know a music exec but also where do you guys put the fans who want what they want how do you guys find the thin line between sticking to what you want to do and also listening to your fans because i, okay. I think this new body of work is fantastic I yeah yeah it. yeah so it's, it's 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 what i said it's what i said earlier as artists, you can grow, you can become anything. You can decide that tomorrow, you know what? Fuck it. Where I am right now, I hate the world. I want to start making it to what type of music. Because at this point in that's your life, that's how you're feeling. I understand that. But for you to for you to now start making that type of music, you need to let me as a fan. That that loved you because you did not hate the world. You need to let me understand why, why? you now hate the, the world. world. She understand. If you show it, see fans. I don't want to use the word that I want to use, but fans do not know what, what they, they want, want until you give them. They just want good shit. I hear artists say that a lot. They no. It's not. It's not shitting on the fans. No, no, no. It's I hear artists say that a lot. Like I'll give you what I want. They just want good shit. They just want as okay. Say you are a member of Fireboy FC. You just want shit that is good enough for you to go and brag to the member of Joe Boy FC or Rema FC. That's to say my shit is good enough. I'm better than whatever. Trust me, you don't care. You just want shit that is good enough. But now for you to see that this shit is good enough, you need to connect to it. You need to understand it. Trust me, everything, the most important things in your life, you connected to them, right? Mm -hmm. Like you have a deep personal connection yes. to them. 100. Exactly. So it's like, you need to make sure that they connect to it as well. You are... Okay, I might, I might, I might not say this right, but let me try. There was one time Vector made the, made, made, made the statement and he said, um, he sees himself as an artist. And as an artist, he's going to make art that he likes that he's feeling at that point yes so now he's down to the fans. the fans to see that art and collect it i agreed and i disagreed because yes you are the artist you can make the art that you want at any time i cannot dictate the art that you want to make for you yes. the art that you make i hope that is coming from a genuine place so you are making it from where you are standing right now yes but your work now as a professional yeah she understand as a commercial artist if yeah. you want to eat yes is for you to be able to take that piece of art and explain it to me in, in a, way a way that, that I, I will understand to. it and i'll connect to it she understand yes. me so that's the work that 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 a very good artist that that has a mastery of the artistry should learn you can make anything anything you can make anything but what you have to do is make sure that you can sell that anything that you have made in the way that the artists will love in the way, in the way that, that the fans, the fans will, will they would they would collect they might not understand it but they would love it they would or they would it. respect they it. would exactly thank you that's it i think that's you know that's what <sighs> that's what fire got wrong okay so in this conversation you know you mentioned rema Hmm. And you know, the recent convert in the, one of his recent interviews, yeah. he made reference to the big three conversation. And you hmm. know, for a while, he has been talking about how he feels like there's no big three. Yeah, it's, it's, big, it's, it's big four. <laughs> and he should be the fourth person yeah. in that conversation. Yeah. Because, and today, I, I was watching the interview and he made reference to his doings. Literally, that guy is the first artist out of Nigeria. Um, as a lead act to mm. get one billion streams on Spotify. That is ridiculous. Rema is massive. That's ridiculous. Rema is massive. One billion streams. Yeah. And he said that he was talking about like, you know, he feels he deserves to be the big four. And also he made reference to something that I wasn't thinking about before. Okay. But I when I heard him say it, I'm like, hmm. Okay. He made reference to um awards, global awards, creating creating a category of the impact of Afrobeat mm. or of the impact like of the impact of Afrobeat of, yeah. the, of the impact of you know the globalization of, of Afrobeat, Afrobeat and of you know his workings his doings yeah. and I and I started to put two, two and two, two together, together to see like wait so <laughs> Where is it coming when from? did these guys give us this category mm. when did Rema's song hit, hit one billion the, yeah, streams yeah. when did 
and try, trying to connect everything those award categories or you know to his success yeah, yeah, yeah. and i'm like i might not get the timeline right but i, I see it you see what you're saying i i, I hear yeah. you like brother boy i said to brother boy remember you make a solid point yeah. like i hear what you're saying do you understand mm. I, i'm like and i never thought about it that way do you think that that is a conversation i like big for and the fourth should be Rema? okay so in the so deep it okay let's do this let's do this so when they ask you to make uh mount rushmore that they always make yeah so now mount, mount rushmore is supposed to be like what, the, what uh, to get to mount rushmore you need a number of things legacy, legacy. Hmm. um longevity mm -hmm. success success uh, so like it's over time over time you understand mm. so now that's mount rushmore but if you are talking about then let me use football now as the as the example for this now so currently right now mind you the so it used to be uh, the big big four man you chelsea um arsenal Oh no, Chelsea, Liverpool, big four, like that. But current, recently, recently, based on current form, mm -hmm. it's no longer a big four. There's a wider conversation of a big six, big seven. But mm -hmm. now when you say a big six, big seven, now those big those people in the big six and big seven, if you were to make a Mount Rushmore of Premier League clubs, some of the clubs in those big in that big seven might not make it to Mount Rushmore. Because they are out right now. They just do not have that legacy. They do not have that longevity. Legacy status they to do be not have in to that be in before. Mount Rushmore. Oh. Sure you understand. Okay. So right now, I think this is it. Okay. Mount Rushmore is four. Yeah. Wiz, David, Boyna, and Tiwa, if you ask me. Why? Like I said, legacy. Legacy. Longevity. Impact. A number of things. Hmm. Sure, you understand me. But if you ask me to make a list of the oddest artists right now, say in the last five years, I'm not going to use my last five years to make a Mount Rushmore. No. Hmm. It's not enough for me to make a Mount Rushmore five years. Nah, come on. What do you mean you have Mount Rushmore? That's legacy. I'm not going to use the last five years to make Mount Rushmore. But I can make a list of oddest artists in the last five years. Hmm. That is <laughs> such a profound thing. To <laughs> sure, say you understand? Because, hmm. I can make a list of other really artists giving me in a five lot of years. POVs. See, in the last five years, wait, five years is 2019. In the last five years, I'm not going to put TY in my other artists top yeah. five or top six, but yeah. I'm definitely going to put her in Mount Rushmore. Hmm. Sure, you understand what I'm saying? Fact. I would not put her in the last in the hottest artist for the last five years. If you ask me to say oh hottest artist in the last five years, ah, yeah. then I'm thinking about Rema. Rema. I'm thinking about Shake. Thinking about Ira they've Star. Been, they've been hot like seriously for five, five years. years. But I'm not gonna put them on my Mount Rushmore. I hear you love. <laughs> you understand? I I'm hear not. You no disrespect to them. Say maybe maybe in another five. Then we come then back. Then I can to come back and visit that. Say you understand? So you feel like a very very important determining factor yeah for that kind of recognition of big three big four yeah is legacy yeah and impact over time over time and time that, and that time, years, time 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 like it's not based on like immediate yeah, impact so or time, impact in the next the time time answers a lot of things time and bro I, you know you you know how music is now at this video ought this year yes this year make tomorrow next year come Make you know what at all. Hmm. But in that one year way he ought, he, he has broken records, he has making so much money. Yeah. So he has made so, so much, much money. money. You understand? Yeah. In that one year. But the next year, if you know what again, oh, yeah. she you understand what I'm yeah. saying. So it's a is time is time answers a lot of things. Hmm. A lot of things like Rave and Roses, like I said, it dropped. Um, uh, when was it 2022? It dropped 2022. In 2022, I did not like it, but time has answered that for me. You understand? So, time very, very important. But right now, yes, Rema has every claim to be in any. Ha, the word, don't let me be sensational. <laughs> this word. Say, if you if you ask me to do top five in the last three years, I might not even put the video. No, Rema has done ridiculous work. 
You understand? Like you understand? Rid- ridiculous work. Insane work. Yes, insane work. In, in, work rate on steroids. You understand? Yes, I agree. Ashake in the last two, three years as well has done insane. Bonkers. Ridiculous. In, you understand? But I would not put him in my Mount, Mount Rushmore. I get you now. I think I, I understand. That's what I it understand is. this explanation that you gave me. That's what it is. Now, you know, working with Luna yeah. and Luna living a, um, a part of his life in the north. Yeah. And ex- his experience in banditry and all of that, and him now moving, is he is he still in Abuja? No, 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 no. He's he's, he's, he's in Lagos he's right in now. Lagos now. Yeah, oh, you, Abuja he, has recovered to Lagos. Okay. Yeah, he got the Lagos yeah. right now. Uh, if you don't the Lagos, Ooh, eh. okay, cool. <laughs> How do you feel about like I'm sure you saw the news about the Borno State situation, the Madugui yeah. flood, yeah, and as a Nigerian, as a young Nigerian, how tired are you of Nigeria? On a scale of one to one. On a scale of just, one to hundred. One has just skill. On a scale of one to hundred, I would say two hundred and five. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I'm tired. Like I'm tired. I like I, I am tired. I said it earlier, like yeah, like Nigeria's greatest resource is its people. Yeah. And this country has like the potential to be a world power if this country works. Hmm. Look at sports. Let's we are going to do it together in yeah. all the industries. We are going to do it together. Yeah. Look at sports. Before you mention before you mention fifty people in sports, if I don't mention like two or three Nigerians. Hmm. Like right now. Go to movies. Before you mention fifty actors and actresses, you would have mentioned a Nigerian. Go to uh, uh go to finance hmm. go to tech hmm. go to go to a number of industries hmm. there's a nigerian somewhere there hmm. so our greatest resource is our human resource yeah. but if this country was a working country trust me we are so we we would be a world power hmm. so it's it's very very saddening watching watching like all of us do all of this and then the country is still like it is. The country is holding everybody back. It's very, very sad. I'm so, so tired of night. I hate, like, I, I, this is, this is the topic that I hate the most. Yes. Speaking about the struggles in this yeah. country, because I feel no stop. Yeah. I know I, I bloody hate it here, man. Like, I bloody hate it here. And what makes me hate it so much is the fact that we can't be so much more. Yes. We have the capacity. Oh, we be can't so be so much more. We can't be so much more. So it's really sad, man. But yeah, on a scale of one to hundred, two hundred and five. Two hundred and five. How was it like going to Kano? So when we when we decided to go to Kano. Did you guys go by road? Oh fuck no. <laughs> why would we do that to ourselves? <laughs> like why would we do that? <laughs> so when we decided to go to Kano. Because when we started working on the project, it was just right that we go back to the roots. The project is called Homeless. And we just wanted to capture like the re- the one time it felt the essence of home, yeah. of a community. And what that is like or felt like to him. To him. And that was in Kano. Sure you understand. So when we decided to go to Kano, it was a very crazy idea. And a lot of, a lot of things came up. So I was... <laughs> I was reluctant to go. I can't even lie. Mm-hmm. I was reluctant to go. I was like, "Omo, if we go, I better go." So Dafe, Dafe is um, Dafe is the CEO. Is the owner, is the CEO of uh, KVLT. That's the management agency that um, Luna is signed to. And you know, Dafe knows a number of people. I was like, "Dafe, I have five. Go go this canoe. I bet you go follow Kwaku and so talk in Peking because uh, Dafe knows Kwaku and so son." They go create. They go f- help us find security detail. We go they follow us. Walk up okay, and down everywhere. Yes, everybody laughed, but I was serious too because I did not want to go if our security was not going to be guaranteed. And you, you can understand me. I would understand why. She understand, but Luna was like, nah. That every the the the, the community that we are going to in Kano is is this is that part of the country where like people are just at peace with the life that they have. Hmm. Or should I say the life they're that con- they have been given? Hmm. They're content. She understand like the community we went to in Kano. I after that time, swear on my life, I want to go back to Kano. Ooh. 
Oh, yes. I absolutely enjoyed my time there. Like, I loved it. I mean, Luna, Luna, Luna is, still based, is, is still based out in Kano. So, like, we have plans to go back to Kano, like, later this year, you know, probably, like, stuff. yeah, he's, he has a place in Kano. Okay. He's going to get a new place, but he has okay. a place that he's going to get a new place where all of us can always go back to any time we need to, you know, leave Lagos. I, I, I do not like Lagos. I have a love-age relationship with Lagos. I do, too. She understands. So, I really want to go back to Kano. So, like, the community we went to, the, the where we went to in Kano, the people we went to, we went to do all the stuff with in Kano, they are just people that... They're just living. Hmm. They are just okay with the life that they have been given. They do not care about any of all those things. They are just living. There was one time, like, during the shoots, during the series of shoots that we had. So we had this, of course, we we're moving around with security detail. We had this, our white bus. So, every, so there was this one community that we went to shoot. Yeah. Immediately we packed. Yeah, it was for Can't Breathe video. So for Can't Be Video, the idea was to do like a mini, low-key, Mad Max type thing. Okay. All right? So we had like plenty bike men. And we had plenty Kekena Pep. Uh -huh. So the idea was they would be chasing Luna on the road. Uh -huh. So when we got to that community and they saw all of those bike men, they started running, you know. Like immediately we got there, they saw bikes, bikes parking. They park, 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 park. They so were, you guys can be bandits. Exactly, they were you guys very. Can be bandits. They were very, very terrified. But like when we, luckily for you, of course, Luna speaks the language, so Luna spoke to them. They were so welcoming. Welcoming. Ooh. Like they were so welcoming. So I understood it that okay, maybe they were like that because they thought something else. Yes, of course. And given like the climate that they of live course, in, what they've understand what they've experienced. They have to take that. But they were so themselves. welcoming. Like they were so welcoming. They loved they loved everything we came there to do. Like mm -hmm. they were so interested. They wanted to see it. They they loved everything. They were so welcoming. So like that is one that is one place that I actually like want to go live for like say two months and just experience Kano for I'm like assuming it's peaceful. Very, very peaceful mm. and beautiful. It is very, very peaceful and beautiful. Hmm. Trust me. It is very, very peaceful and beautiful. Like the people there, they know nothing, nothing really go far like that for them. Nothing they they are not they're not chasing anything. They are not stressed about they're not chasing, they are yeah. not stressed about whatever yeah. it is that you man might be thinking about. I'll be chasing. They are just bro, Lagos is Lagos is too fast. It is, I agree. Man them out there are just, you know, man them out there are just, you know what? Oh, you okay, wake up, go to work, be back in the house, then they will go to Ahmed Musa uh, relaxation center in the evening and everybody and everybody's everybody chilled, is chilled smoking their shisha, taking their and just living a quiet life. Just living a quiet life. She understand. Do you think that living in Lagos puts you in a headspace where you think the rat race is important. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, that's what Lagos does to you. Literally, this oh. can't be all. Wake up, hustle, grind. Okay, to like to what end? I saw a, I saw a video on TikTok that you know one girl put out, and she said, "Guys, it's just everything." <laughs> yes. Wake up, chase money, use the money to do to something. Wake up again, chase, chase money. money. Like it just feels like an endless rat race. Like so, she said so. At what point do we say okay? It's okay, and it feels like that point is only death. Oh, nah. So that's, do you think it's a Lagos thing? Yeah. That's, or do you that's think it's it. our generation thing? Do you think it's the the life that we are in now? Because I like there are certain places that I've been to outside of Nigeria, and I'm like, what's going on in this Nigeria country? Like when I when I went to Senegal, hmm. it was so calm. Yeah. Like people were riding their bikes, people were just, you know, doing their mm -hmm. thing. When I went to Egypt, people were just doing their thing. Yeah. She just come back here, bro, 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 bro. And I and I think that the older I get, the more I crave that life. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to move out of Lagos at some point. Like, yeah. Like just move out of Lagos. So cause because I I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a knife man. And I play shows like around the country. I've been yeah. to places like in Nigeria and it's not the same. Nah, like I love it. Even when I went there. to Ibadan. You don't understand. Like I love the bro, okay. When I went to, when 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 I was in Ibadan for, for, for a couple shows, mm -hmm. block party one time like that. Mm -hmm. 
Bro, people in Ibadan, they are doing things on their own times. It's in their Malan living life. Bro, okay, that day, I remember that day we, 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 we got to Ibadan by around uh, 9 o'clock in the morning because I went to like number of my boys. We had this, there was this block party in Ibadan that time, and we, you know, it, I think it was the first one after lockdown. Hmm. So, boys, boys, to, yes, boys wanted to, like, you know, we've been inside, something boys wanted like to life. So, a number of my boys were like, you know what, after I'm gonna go Ibadan now. We collected these six bedroom apartments in Ibadan, we were just there for like the weekend, everybody wanted to enjoy it. So, we arrived in Ibadan by nine o'clock, and PM. we needed to eat, no, AM, and we needed to eat. But actually, if you believe, say by nine ten, shops never open for Are you Ibadan. joking? I mean, I mean, it, eh? <laughs> shops never open for it. Oh, yeah, we don't see chow until like 11 12. There was one time that I went there because the last time I went to Ibadan, I think we were, we were, we were trying to buy something from a shop, hmm. and I was so pressed at how sluggish the woman it, was. It pissed me off, oh, but in retrospect, I, I, just I sat down like, and I did. Are it. you sure no, but you get the problem? <laughs> because why you they try this? Yes, the fasting at, fasting. That, at that time, like, why like, did you they ah, you know what I'm saying? my law. Like, people hey? living, people living life at their own pace. Me, I, me, I love like, I, I love life like that too. Cause slow days. I, I love, live for I slow days like and that. Slow I grew mornings. up, I grew up in Ogun State. I grew up in Shagam Ooh. before I moved to Lagos for school. You understand? I grew up in Shagam and I mean, I saw life there. I, wa- I wanted out. I wanted out, out. of that place <laughs> so bad. I wanted out. The way you so now experience fast, like mm. you know what. I am actually it. miss that. <laughs> I, it's, it's, yes. it's, it's too chaotic. But like I said, I think it's, it's a Lagos thing. And you know why I start? There's about 12 million of us in this city. And Lagos, by architectural design, should not cater for more than 2 million. Huh. So imagine 2 million, Crowd. 12 million. Excessive. It is excessive. So, like, for all those 12 million people to cohabit in a place that is meant for just 2 million, it is a race it's against time, against everything. Sure, you understand. I've been to, I loved it in Calabar. Like, I've I, never I, been there. Oh, I absolutely loved it in Calabar the one time that I went. I loved it in Calabar. Um, where, else, where else have I gone to that? I went to Ilorin one time like that. Well, maybe the thing is that maybe I don't spend so much time in these places. So the so the the the, the actual livelihood of these people, the yeah. the life that they live, maybe I don't see it. Maybe but like what I, I get bored. Yes, but like what I see, the times that I go and the, the small time that I spend, I absolutely love it. When I went to Ilorin, it was it was calm. Me, me I, I think that Lagos is the place that people need to be taking in doses. Yes, now. Yes, I don't now. Think this is one that yes, we now. Be dying yes, on. now. Like as, aside from the economic benefit, I feel like this yes. is the place. Lagos was. I think it's also contributing to our mental health. Yeah. The, yeah. the multitude or the large number or the number of people that feel as tired, stressed as they yeah. feel. I yeah. feel it's like being in this place, being in a place yeah. as fast paced as this as, as congested as Lagos. Yes, that's, I, I that's think the thing, so. yes. Do, do yeah. you think that uh, what was your experience like like performing at block party do you think that contributed to your popularity oh yes uh, do you think block party like oh absolutely that's like that's a major part of my story hmm. like that is a big part of my story I'd, when when i started out at block party so i think it was 20 was it 2018 yeah i think it was 2018 or thereabouts when i started at block party i was just like i was just a kid in uni like Oh, yeah. you, you got it from Unilag? Yeah, yeah, I went to Unilag. Oh, I went to Unilag too. Yeah, hey, what did you study? Cell biology. Hey, what genetics. did you finish? Oh, years ago. I'm sorry, I can't remember the particular year. Okay, I'm very okay. forgetful, but okay. we'll check it yeah, while you I, go. I, I go into Unilag 2015. 15? Yeah. I was still in Unilag then, I think. Hey, yeah, I was still in Unilag. Fair. So, like, I was, I mean, I was just in Unilag, and I was just doing my thing with my boy, Titanium. You understand? Shout out Titanium. So... Block party happened. Titan got on the pole. He, he got into block party. And me, ah, I loved it. I really wanted to be. So I fought for my place to, you know, I, mm. I wasn't, I did not do the pole. I did not do anything. But, you know, I really wanted to be there. Like, I enjoyed performing. And I really wanted to be there. So I fought for my place there. Shout out to Tosamak, uh, Bolilomo, and Livewire, they, and Tobad. Yeah. 
they, they made sure that I always got on that stage. So every time, like, Titanium was going to block party, I would follow now, she understand, because, you know, it was me okay. and Titanium, where, you understand. Okay. In school, we were always playing shows together, so I would always go with him. And they did not know me. I did not win the poll. Alaji Poppy and all and Bizu them did not know me. I did not win the poll. It was not me. It was not a poll about me. But to Sam Mark, Bolly Lomo and Live Wire and Tobad, every time I was there, they always made sure that okay, even if it was for like 10, 15 minutes, I got to mic and did something. Hmm. So I kept on doing 10, 15, 20, 30 until I was there. She understand. I feel like block party is a very big part of my story, man. Like I, I would always love everybody at block party i would always love to block party. it's a very big part of my story yeah that's performing at block party shaped like my it shaped my my artistry if i can if i can say it like that and also help like with the trajectory of your career yes right? yes do you, do you still perform there and no no not for not for some time now sure when was the last time you were there huh? when was the last time you were you performed there um earlier this year I think I think last time I last time I went to a block party was was it April yeah or May, oh okay I guess. okay okay yeah. that's not so long ago. Yeah, yeah I think yeah about yeah about March April yeah that was last time but I, your relationship is cool with them oh yeah, yeah yeah that's that's family like for bro like I would always say it they gave me a lot like yeah. they gave me a lot I had like I had a platform to perform every month back to back to at least two thousand people were you getting paid for it uh. <laughs> when, when we <laughs> see your face uh yeah 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 i mean it was it wasn't like you know your booking fee or shit like that okay like yeah but when i started out it was i wanted to do this i wanted to get on this place mm -hmm. you understand so i wasn't getting paid for that but when it became a thing where i became a brand myself you understand like of course this is tolu daniels it's built something and yeah yeah it was yeah there was payment but i mean not D but, type, but like yeah, I get you, like appreciation, I mean, yeah, like this is block party. This, this is, is this is this thank is, you this for is where, this is where I started out from. You understand? Yeah, family you stuff. Understand. I get it. I get it. Yeah. Well, I I think that generally, as young people, we also need to understand the importance of paying your dues. Yes, so yes, and so, using yes, the platform so. to your to your advantage. To your advantage, yes. and also when you get to that point, it's also important to know when to start asking for. Renomination. Very, very, very. Don't get important. caught up in that. Exactly. I'm still upcoming forever. Do not, do not, do not, do not get lost in that euphoria of oh, this is how this thing makes me feel. If not, you are going to, you are going to feed off that euphoria for years, and, and you hungry. just realize that you're actually hungry. <laughs> you understand me? You understand me? Yeah. I mean, platform is great, but at the end of the day, you need to understand it's that chopping. first things first. You guys chop now. Oh yeah, if I know drop, if I skin, yeah, I won't take jump for stage. I agree. And also for the young people that are doing that as they are fighting for themselves, it's also important for the people with the platforms to also know when to start. Paying. Yeah, I think it's it's just about it's like I said. It's a balance. It's always it's just just be a good person. If you're I a good agree. person to the next man. Because there are so many cases that will say, I don't know how to ask for money. Better ask. Be open your mouth to I don't know how to build. Oh, lie no, lie no. Ask ask for what you think you are due. If they now say, okay, we don't think you are do this. If you think you are, if you are convinced that you are do that, Ogbeni, ask for what you are do, man. Ask for what you do, in the words of exactly, Tolu Daniels, man. and that's not period. Thank you yes, so much, sir. Tolu, for coming today. I swear, I love this one. I really love it. <laughs> Absolutely. I thoroughly yeah, yeah, enjoyed really having good. this conversation I with swear, you. Like, I barely... I barely talk. I think the other interview, I probably I can count on one and the interviews that I have done. But this, but, but so I feel like you just talk, you just need go. This is really, really good. I really think good. we should do it again. I oh, yeah, really no, enjoyed, I and I also enjoyed like the POVs that you gave me on certain conversations that I didn't have. Thank you for this having This was really me. good. This was very insightful. Thank you so much. Thank Please go follow Tolu Daniels on social media at the Tolu Daniels, the Tolu Daniels the Tolu. underscore everywhere. That's yes, me. and also support everything that he's working on. Support him as a hype man. Support his artists. Come to my shows. Come to his shows. Listen to my projects mm -hmm. from the artists that I work with, please. Yes. Thank you very much. Um, is there any project you're working on right now that you want to shout out and you know let people know about? Uh, right now, I think I put out a two recently that I'm taking a break until 2026. Oh, okay, cool. For for personal for the projects. Last, for the last three years, I've done a project 
2022, 23, 24, I've worked on a project, like a full scale production that I am fully involved with. Okay. Here. But I think 2025, I I'm going to work on some stuff just to like a little bit of sequencing here and there, yeah. help people like put. It. But I think doing a full production, I want to take a break so like I can you know rest my mental, the creative space, you know, and come back everything, on. and just come back. But you'll still be working with artists now. Oh yeah, absolutely, like, absolutely. Uh, like them, well, of course now. Yes now, yes of course, now. Of course, okay. of course. Please also listen to Luna's body of work titled Please Homeless. Homeless. If you haven't listened to it, you should absolutely listen to it. And you can let me know in the comment section on YouTube how you feel about the body of work called Homeless by Luna. And make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel at um, Zero Conditions. Follow us on social media at Zero Conditions. And follow Pop Central too. They are partners and, you know, we love them at Pop Central. And also buy a bottle of Shiva's Regal if you haven't. Nah, this shit is actually good. Everybody say so. Yeah. Everyone who has come on the show and tasted she was like, wait, what? Yeah, this is Am I be sleeping under a rock? <laughs> this is really good. Yeah, so buy good. yourself a bottle of Shiva's Regal. And we still have more cocktail, Abby. I don't know why you don't want to come and tell ah, us about your cocktail. cocktail. See, you know cocktail. what? Come and tell us this about the cocktail, cocktail but it's cool. But I love it. It's really nice. Yeah. I finished mine. Um, yes. Thank you so much for watching. Until next week. Bye bye. My name is Melody. This has been Zero Conditions brought to you by Pop Central and Shiva's Regal. And this is D. Tolu Daniels. Bye. 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 Yeah.